Hi everyone, um, welcome to our Ask the Experts live stream where we delve deeper into different topics from the world of beauty and well-being. And tonight's topic is all about well-being and self-care. Um, so it's pretty broad spectrum, it's probably the broadest topic we've done uh, since we started the Ask the Experts series. Um, and I thought it was really important to, to talk about well-being and self-care because it's a topic that you know, has become quite trendy in the media and uh, marketing and social media over the last few years, but it's definitely something that's been a really interesting topic all the way through uh, COVID-19. So we're going to chat about what it means, how the industry is evolving, um, and then we're also going to get some expert tips for our own wellness journeys as we go. So of course, as usual, pop any questions that you have uh, in the comments on the side and we'll answer them as we go along um, for either myself or any of the experts that we've got. So tonight uh, the panel uh, we've put together is um, probably the most um, broad that we've had which is really exciting um, and they're all experts in lots of different areas which is great. Um, but I think it, we've done that so that we try and cover as much of the kind of well-being industry as possible. So whether it's health, fitness, nutrition, uh, skincare, you know, beauty, all of that. So um, I'm really excited to be chatting with you all tonight. So um, here's our panel. I'm joined by Alex from Elixir Skincare, who is one, hi Alex, who's one of our newest brands at Bloma Beauty. And I'm really excited to have them um, on the store uh, because they're a natural range of skincare that are inspired by kind of global ingredients, uh, different rituals, um, and they've got some incredible products that help you create your own kind of self-care regimes at home, whether you've got five minutes to do a really express cleanse or you've got an hour to really pamper and do a really intensive kind of facial massage. So um, I think that makes them a really versatile uh, range to include and welcome Alex. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, and then we've got Jane from Nom Nom Skincare. Uh, Jane's range specialises in organic skincare for pregnancy, mum and baby. And Jane's also a pre and postnatal pre and postnatal massage uh, therapist and nutritionist. And I'm really pleased that Jane's part of uh, this Q and A tonight because. Lots of our customers who are either going through pregnancy uh, during lockdown or are maybe um, mums managing working from home full time and homeschooling are kind of really in need of some tips um, on how to like factor in some well-being. So thank you, Jane, for joining us and sharing all your knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> And then uh, last but not least, we've got Sam, who is from The Well Body. Sam's a holistic well-being coach. Um, she's had a really full career in the beauty industry and still found time to become a multidisciplinary uh, fitness coach. So she launched The Well Body earlier this year um, to kind of draw on all of her expertise and create coaching programs that help you feel well from a kind of 360 degree perspective. So I think she's going to be able to provide really great expertise on how we can um, incorporate well-being into kind of our everyday regimes rather than just always setting time aside. So welcome, Sam. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So <laughs> we'll just, as usual, we'd like to get to know our panellists a little bit better. So Alex, tell us a little bit more about you and Elixir. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me as well. Yeah, it's really good to be here. Um, so my name is Alex, as you've obviously has, has said and everyone's gathered. Um, I'm the founder of Oilixia Skincare and our products you may have seen already on the feed, which look like this. <laughs> so at the moment we've got quite a small range, like it's quite a tight range, which is very like multi they multitask quite well um, and they're quite versatile. Um, but the main inspiration behind the brand was really um, I guess like global ingredients and, and throughout my time as you probably have may have realized so far I'm Australian so I came to the UK almost 10 years ago to the day I left Australia yeah, Happy so it, was anniversary. it was my 10 year anniversary of leaving Australia um so after I had left I um did quite a lot of travel as you do it's like a rite of passage I suppose for many Australians to travel the world and like see different places that you're not really able to see from Australia because it's so far away from everything. Um, and I've also worked in the beauty industry for over 12 years now. 
So I started my career at L'Oreal in Australia and I've worked for some other brands as well. Um, so I guess it's like through doing all of this travel and having the background in beauty, I started looking at these different regions I was going to and starting to notice that every region across the world has like their thing or their ingredient that is so well known in that particular region, but might not be that well known across the rest of the world. Um, so a good example of this is like just using an example from Australia. Um, like growing up, we use eucalyptus oil quite a lot. It's like a native ingredient to Australia and it's a bit of a cure-all. So if you've got a cold, you use eucalyptus oil. Um, if you've got a cut, you can use eucalyptus oil as an antibacterial topical solution. Um, so it was kind of like seeing these types of ingredients inspired me to take those ingredients and put them into a product that's very effective and that more people can enjoy. But also bearing in mind where they're being sourced from, so making sure the sourcing of those ingredients is sustainable from both an environmental and social perspective also. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the brand and me in a nutshell. Amazing. Thank you. And, Jane, tell us a little bit more about your uh, journey and with Nom Nom and in your kind of massage, pre- and postnatal massage therapy. Yeah. So, as, so as you said, uh, massage and nutritional therapy is my background and my focus very early on was pregnancy and, and postnatal. That became my, my real passion, really. Uh, so I was doing pregnancy massage, baby massage, and then lots of um, nutrition for pregnancy and, and natally and also weaning talks. And, and Nom Nom really grew out of, of that, you know, so lots of questions that I, I had from um, my clients, um, particularly with their babies, so particularly skincare issues. Um, so it, it, it was a way of, of developing a range that I felt covered everything that people needed, looked after all the particular skincare issues that they had, um, supported them through each trimester. Um, and it was a way of, of, of sort of bringing my, my therapy beyond the treatment room. Um, and well-being is really at the heart of, of, of Nom Nom. So try to bring in the, the nutrition and the, and the massage um, and, you know, general fitness um, wherever I can. Um, so, it, you know, the ethos is, is about looking after yourself from, from without and from within. Perfect. Thank you. So really holistic approach there. And I yeah. think um, that's also very similar to, Sam, what, what you're doing with the well body. Um, it's quite a new venture for you. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, um, it began earlier this year. Um, I, I've been in the industry since I was 13, really. My very first job as a Saturday girl in a clinic of alternative therapy, as they were called back then, before wellness was um, kind of seen as anything other than just woo-woo and airy-fairy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I've, um, I've worked as a beauty therapist, as a spa therapist. Um, I, I taught beauty for a while and then more recently found myself in sales for uh, big skincare brands, nail brands. And um, I just sort of realized I had my own kind of uh, awakening really about 12, 18 months ago that I just needed more and that my work-life balance was basically non-existent. And um, so this kind of idea for the well body started to develop and it was really going to be something that I was going to work on over a long longer period of time let it grow you know slowly um and then COVID-19 hit um and I'd already handed my notice in from my very uh, you know my my employment <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly I was kind of like oh I, I need to make this happen now and I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason so um I'm I'm in my third month of the well body and yeah, like you said, it's just, it, it's really, what I want to do is put everything that I've learned over the last 20 years or so um, together for people who like me really struggled to find that work-life balance and really make it easy to implement wellness into your everyday life because it's so much more than just going for a nice treatment, you know, and that that's just one part of it, just one part. So it's really about showing people that there's so much more to it than 
than just maybe going to the spa or the salon. It's about what you can do every day at home. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's about when you say the work-life balance, I almost think that's why the terms wellness, well-being, self-care have really come to the fore recently because we are finding there is less work-life balance in our lives. We're constantly switched on and I think we're almost having to compartmentalise our lives. So I think what if we can hopefully share with everyone today is how we can find that balance just in everyday Mm. life and not have to as you say be like let's take that time and segment it for wellness but um I think we mentioned in the the post leading up to this uh live stream that I guess the definition of well-being is being feeling happy healthy and content um but I think how you get to those feelings is very much I'm going to say it the j word a journey um then it's very personal to each person so um if I can ask each of you what does the what does the feeling of being you know happy healthy and content mean to you should we go let's go to Jane first Um, so I, I sort of think of them as two separate things, really. So it's a well-being. Um, think of it as, as sort of um, the foundations of looking after ourselves. Um, and I think that that sort of applies to everyone equally. And then I, I think self-care is um, is much more individual. And it's about, you know, what particularly, um, you know, it's very particular to person and and, and you know what what you need to make you feel um happy and well and that can be so different for different people you know for someone it might be doing some yoga and meditation and for another person it might be you know having having a lie in you know yes. especially for, for a new mum um so yeah it, it's it's finding out you know what is is important to make you feel happy and content Lovely. I love the the idea of splitting the two. I think, yeah, they're terms that kind of get interwoven quite a lot. Um, Sam, how about you? Yeah, I really agree with that. Um, I, I think, I think for me personally, it's about making it sustainable um, and taking that moment, that mindful moment for yourself every single day um because we can't we can't fill from an empty cup so you can't possibly expect to show up in other areas of your life if you're not taking care of yourself first um so yeah for me it's about finding those sustainable uh rituals I like to call them instead of routines um that just give you that moment for yourself lovely and Alex this is such good points and I totally like I completely agree I think with finding those moments throughout the day um for me personally I guess the two together what it feels like for me is to have balance so throughout the day like having like having that feeling of balance in your life so you know it's not kind of like I think when the pendulum swings one way or the other like way too much work and not enough me time things can get thrown off kilter a little bit and that's when problems start to arise so I think if you can maintain that balance, wherever that balance point might be for you personally, um, is probably a good place to start. And to get to that point, I guess doing small things that are sustainable is probably a better way to reach that, because reach that, it's something that you can then continue day after day and long term rather than sort of going gung-ho for a day and then sort of forgetting about it the next day. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, yeah. For me, it's interesting you say a pendulum. I think of it as a pyramid. So um, for me, on the bottom, and Sam knows if we've done this at another event before, but um, I see it as like your kind of basics, like almost like Jane was saying about the well-being aspect is sort of like health, nutrition, staying active on the bottom. And then the next one up is sleep because I find that if I don't have enough sleep, everything else falls down. Um, and then it's also about spending time doing things that you love. So whether, I think as I think Janie touched upon it, you know, a lot of the time, well-being and self-care is talked about as like doing yoga and 
drinking smoothies and you know meditating and and all of this which is absolutely fantastic don't get me wrong but I think there's other things it could be taking time to learn something you know I've just got into sewing for example so that actually makes me feel really at peace and you know really away from technology and um doing something creative so there's that element of like things that I do for fun as a time out of the the day to day um but yeah the kind of health nutrition and and fitness is kind of the 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 basics the building blocks for me um what do you guys also think is a priority when it comes to well-being jane so um so i i like to think of it as the 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 ness in wellness as being nutrition exercise sleep which is very important for me too, so, um, and, and stress. Um, and so I think if you can look after those four as a foundation, um, then it's going to do so much for your your um, physical and your mental well-being. Wonderful. Oh, I like that, the nest. You are coming up with loads of tips tonight already. It's great. <laughs> um, I think we can't speak um, about this topic tonight without talking about COVID-19. Um, Sam, what what changes do you think COVID has brought about um, when it comes to well-being? I feel like it's really forced us to look very closely and a lot deeper at just how unbalanced our lives were before. Um, as I said before, we were very, uh, you know, that, that we were very, um, you know, on call. Uh, I, I think we are bigger workaholics here in the UK than we actually realise. <laughs> um, and I think there was a lot of imbalance. We were, um, as a whole, quite unwell, if you like. And I think this whole thing with um, COVID-19 has really... First of all, it's allowed us all to slow down, right? Because the vast majority of people if, who aren't key workers are have been furloughed. Um, so, you know, a huge amount of the population has been forced in some way to slow down. And that then has forced us to really kind of re-examine our lives and actually maybe have that realisation or start to question when things go back to some kind of normal, do I actually want them to go back to the way they were for me personally? Um, I think there's been a lot of self-reflection, lots of um, getting uncomfortable, lots of things being brought to the forefront that we're all having to deal with in so many ways, both on a personal level and on a global level. And um, yeah, I think it's it's really forced us to just reevaluate um how we live our lives you know yeah I think there's almost a a consciousness in Mm. everything that we do at the minute because the um sort of convenience of a lot of things has been taken away from us so I think that's forcing us to think more consciously about everything that we're doing yeah Um, most definitely Alex how about you I mean has have you been busier than ever or have you been able to kind of take time to reflect and evaluate because I know that there's a, a bit of a spectrum uh, out yeah, there definitely I think it's it's been such an interesting time actually because on one hand I think for the first few weeks it was a bit like oh how do we cope with this new type of normal and there was so much uncertainty and it was just like finding that adjustment and almost like rebalancing your life with this new parameter that you had to work within um for me personally I felt like in some ways I was forced to slow down because I couldn't get as much work done as I would normally get done. Um, and also I had the added challenge because I've got a two year old and her nursery closed suddenly. (laughs) So one day I had nursery, the next day I didn't. So then I suddenly had to try and fit like a day's worth of work into an hour's nap time. So it meant that I was much more efficient, but then it felt quite stressful as well. (laughs) So, so so I guess another thing as well, which is quite interesting in terms of like the self care and wellness side of things, um, and I think a lot of people, this has happened to like a lot of people as well, is that traditionally, if I wanted to go and like have some like time for myself, I would go out of the house to do that. And you would go to like another space, like you might go to a yoga class or you might go and just get a coffee and sit by yourself for a few minutes. 
but suddenly all of that had gone. So you had to find sort of new ways to maintain that kind of sanity <laughs> a bit inside the four walls of your home. So, and also then having less time to be able to do that because everything was quite hectic. Um, so I think being able to do just like little things each day has helped a lot. Um, and then it makes you realize actually maybe you only need like five minutes to yourself or like, you know, you can do something quickly and still maintain that balance. Yeah. yeah. Do you so feel like different. you have maintained that balance or do you think when this is all over, you're going to want to go out uh, of the yeah. house? And <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm going to go. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's okay now because the nursery's opened last week. So it's like after like two weeks of a bit of catch up time, I'm like, okay, I'm feeling like a lot better. Okay. Um, but honestly, towards the end of the 10 week lockdown, I was like, oh, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. I think we've all gone through like a roller coaster. So. Yeah. Um, exactly. I think as well, it's quite interesting is we're kind of seeing this weird easing, some rules, some not rules. Um, and I think that can be sometimes a little bit disconcerting. And it's almost like what Sam said is if you have felt like you want to approach things differently when we come out of this situation, um, my, I guess, Jane, my question would be how can we make sure that as the world changes again, um, we retain the kind of positives that we've maybe found uh, from taking more time to self-reflect. Um, I, I think, as Sam said, it's it's been a time for a lot of people to to reassess. Um, you know, and we've had to do. You know, a lot of people had to do things differently, um, and for some people, that you know can have been a positive thing. So you know, maybe. Uh, you know, with not doing the commute, they found more time for, for exercise or, or for well-being. So I, I think as we come out, it's thinking about what what have been the positives? What, what have I gained from this? And how can I keep that going um, within the new structure, you know, as that, as that emerges? So Yeah, I think a personal worry for me is I've actually... It, I mean, it has been a bit Zoom heavy with like lots of yes. scheduled calls, which has been absolutely fantastic, don't get me wrong. But it's, you almost can't say no because everyone's like, well, what are you doing instead? That there's literally nothing else to do. So I think I need to embody a way of saying no when I come out of this in terms of not so many social engagements, but actually being a bit quieter. And that can be just as restorative as going out for dinner with friends so don't get me wrong I'm not gonna still become be a hermit but it's I think it's going back to that balance and it's made me realize before it wasn't that balance so yeah I think the power of no is is really good I think Sam you you embody that sometimes don't you you have you're like I'm having a no week or whatever we've had emails back and forth where you're like I'm having yeah. to say no how how do you how do you do that it's hard. Um, I find it really hard because I naturally am a yes person and I naturally want to please everyone. So if people ask me to do things, I'm always that person that's like, yeah. And then I worry later about the kind of logistics of it. Um, so I'm really, I have to be very mindful now. Um, you know, whenever I do get asked to do anything, um, I have to really really be mindful um that I'm just kind of asking myself first like what what is the value here um and actually do I need to do this or um you know can I can I leave can I say no to this and can I leave that and or maybe point that person in another direction to maybe you know approach someone else for that it's hard it's really hard but it's I think it's like with anything once you create that awareness around it it suddenly kind of becomes that little bit easier because you you if you do find yourself saying yes and they go oh crikey I should have said no to that you've already created that awareness so the next time it happens you'll be more likely to say let me have a think about that first actually or I'm not sure can I come back to you and it just buys you that time um so you can actually kind of reflect and be like do do I need to do this what value does this bring to to me to my business and what value can I bring to the table um 
yeah, I think it's about just creating that awareness, you know, that mindfulness before, uh, if you're like me being really impulsive and going, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> Which is lovely, but uh, yeah, it, uh, you do get a bit more risk of burnout. Um, yeah, massively. <laughs> I think if if someone's maybe used lockdown to just start to focus on uh, their well-being, um, perhaps, Alex, what would be your advice for starting a well-being journey, I guess? Like, how would you approach that um I think for me personally and I guess maybe from more of like a skincare perspective I'd probably start slowly and then build it up because I feel like if and I know that I'm very much guilty of this if you sort of go into something with a huge plan and you've got like say for example like with skincare you say okay I'm going to start a new skincare regime I'm going to do a 10-step routine every single night and it's going to be great and after two days you're like oh I can't bother anymore. (laughs) So it's not very sustainable. So I would definitely say sort of start small and build it up. So you can then start to sort of like add layers upon layers as each day goes on. And then you might get to a point where you're sort of like content with like that sort of regime or that ritual, for example, of an evening. And it's something that you can manage to do sustainably and then keep it going. Because I think having the consistency is very important. Yeah. Sam, is that the same with, because you, you do a lot of exercise as part of your kind of coaching. Um, And I think lockdown has been incredible for allowing us to try hundreds of different types of exercise, which is fantastic. (laughs) Um, But, you know, it might fall by the wayside when we come out. How, how do you get, I guess, fitness to be part of the everyday? um... I think, Again, it's I totally agree with what um, with what Alexandra said. It's about um, creating those baby steps and not going in with this big old plan, which I'm exactly the same, by the way. You know, I have all these great ideas, these big plans um, and and then wonder why they they don't happen, <laughs> um, you know, or they don't succeed. And it's because we kind of set ourselves up to fail because we go straight for that want of perfection. I think the, the, the beauty with um, us having the time at the moment is those of us who have th- taken it as an opportunity to work on our physical health have kind of created a habit. You know, we're, we're in our where are we now? April, May, June. Yeah, we're in our third month of, of uh, lockdown. And and yes, the restrictions are being lifted, but it's, it's nothing like what it was. So we still have that time, you know, those people who are still furloughed. The, the habit, in a sense, has been created. So really, then, the only thing that needs to be done is to then think, okay, so then how do I fit that into my normal routine? Um, Does that mean that I need to get up earlier? Does that mean that when I come home, I need to make sure that I have the time to do it of an evening? How am I going to fit that in around maybe my children or, um, you know, my social life or, or whatever it is? And I think it's just, if it's a priority for you, you'll find a way. It's like with with skincare, you know, if that is a priority for you and you want to really kind of get your skincare routine like on point, you will find a way to make that happen, you know, and and I think that's that's the thing. But also remembering that, you know, if you are kind of finding that you're Uh, you are going back to work and so you don't have necessarily all of the time in the world that we have had um, then don't feel guilty if you maybe have a day or a week where it just kind of falls off the the wayside because you're human and one bad day and one bad week isn't going to ruin you know your long-term efforts and long-term goals yeah you know I think consistency and progress is yeah, really progress over things. perfection. That's what I believe in. Um, and Jane, I guess Sam's touched upon how we can transition uh, when we get busier. Um, but something that maybe we haven't experienced before um, is when we are, you know, new mums. Um, and maybe before we were pregnant, we had loads of time for self care and exercise and eating well um if we can go 
even deeper than transitioning out of lockdown when you become a new mum like how do you advise your clients and your customers how to still maintain time for themselves yeah it's it's really difficult I mean I think at the moment you know some people are new parents that then they might you know like Alex have older children as well and they're doing the homeschooling and you know perhaps working and, and trying to fit all of that in um I I think um trying to I I think you know what what most uh mums would say they they need most is undisturbed time to themselves um and so it, it's trying to achieve that to do whatever it is that makes you feel better so you know it could be enlisting the, the help of your partner um so that you can you can go out um for, for a walk on your own if that's what you want to do or, or have a you know relax um, in the bath and, and, and some time to pamper or, or to go and meet a friend for a, a distance chat. Um, and it's much harder for, for single parents. Um, so it's really good with the latest government advice about the social bubble so that they'll be able to, um, you know, connect with another household. So, you know, maybe a parent, uh, their own parent or um, a friend, um, you know, to get that support um, but you know it, it's finding the time as well so you know I think like Sam said you know sort of maybe thinking you know if, if you went to bed an hour earlier and got up an hour earlier would that work you know are you, are you better in the mornings um, uh, and but I you know I think with with parents often it's a, a thing of having to multitask um, so it could be um, that you know, if, if the, the ch- you know when the ch- children are asleep, maybe you're doing the chores. That you listen to an inspiring podcast or an audio book or something on the radio or music that you love. It's just something that that you know nourishes you and, and reminds you of, of who you are. Um, you know, for, for yourself. Um, or you know, carrying baby in, in the baby sling so that you can get practical things done more easily. That might then free up some time, um, another time during the day um, to do something for yourself. Lovely. I mean, Alex, have you got any personal uh, tips on how to carve out some time as a, as a mum? Oh. <laughs> I was just making notes then, Jen. I was like, I've got to write all these things down. Because <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone, I'm, I'm, due, I'm due my second baby in 10 days. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> what's going to happen? Ah. Travel, travel um, now. <laughs> one tip that I've actually like only just mastered in the last couple of weeks is, and I haven't done this that often, but I was finding that even like, this is probably like too much information, but even like having a shower, I wasn't alone. It's like, it's like I couldn't get any me time like at all throughout the day. Um, so I, a few times when I just was like, oh, I just need to have some time to myself. I just go into the bathroom, lock the door so no one could come in and then do a quick like one minute skincare regime, get in the shower. And, and then, then that was like, like oh, it felt really nice. nice. So, so I think like having a lock on the bathroom door is a good, a good idea. Okay. <laughs> um, and then Jane, let's talk about um, when you're pregnant. How, because your body's changing so much, it's different in each trimester. I mean, we've done um, a kind of pregnancy massage tutorial together, but have you got any other um, hints or tips as to how you can make yourself feel really great and content whilst going through your pregnancy and you may be little rituals or yeah so something I mean talking about those foundations again so the nutrition exercise and then sleep and stress together so um having a nice uh warm bath with some aromatherapy uh blend in there that's safe for pregnancy um you know, if you're, particularly if you're feeling anxious or you're not sleeping, and often women in the third trimester will find that their sleep is, is very disturbed. Um, and they can be very anxious, you know, especially at the moment. So, um, yeah, taking that time. Um, and then the massage, um, so they can have a... Is that still up on, on the website? Yeah, so it's on our IGTV, so you can see a little demonstration um, that Jane did for us, which is really great. Yeah, so if you can get your partner to, to give you a little bit of a back massage, um, uh, yeah, 
Wonderful, thank you. Um, and then I guess we can't really have a chat um, with Blom and Beauty without talking about beauty. And, you know, it's not just all about that when it comes to self-care, but um, I think for me personally, it is a really great way of giving myself time, making myself feel great, really pampered. Um, Alex, can you talk us through any, some maybe a really quick ritual? You mentioned your one minute ritual there, um, and then also a longer one that you would advise to help us feel um, really taken care of. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, so I've, I've got, got I'm, I'm prepared, I've got the products here, so I'm gonna actually, actually show you on the screen how you can have, do it. Um, and as I said before, you probably notice a bit of a theme with like, me saying that do things little and often and just like even if you have like a minute or two minutes that can make a big difference over the long term and I think that's part in part because I'm quite lazy <laughs> so I don't so even though I love skincare and I love to get the results I I don't really have not much time or patience for doing a big 10-step routine which is why the products that I've developed are quite versatile so you can use them very quickly and they're very easy to use as well but you get the results at the end um, so first of all, like if you were had like a minute, for example, at the end of the day, you could use our gummy cleanser, which is this one here. So that's our cleansing product. Um, so what you do, or how I would normally use it, is before I get in the shower, I'd put a drop like I need that much on. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. But basically, it's like a, it's like it's almost like a balm. Let me call it a gummy cleanser because it's quite sticky. You can see like the tackiness of it on my fingers so what you do and I'm going to put this on my face hang on <laughs> so you'd stand like at the base and I suppose and you'd spread it over your skin and I'm going to get in a bit closer so imagine I'm doing this all I'm just going to do it on half my face so but you spread it all over and then with the texture it becomes quite tacky so you can start to press and lift and what that does is it helps to um like lift and drop your skin so it helps to stimulate circulation it gives you a nice facial massage and it also kind of feels like it's lifting up all the dirt and grime out of the skin so you literally just like slap it all over on top of makeup so it removes makeup as well and just press 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 all over and then normally at that point I'll get in the shower I'd have wet fingertips I'd emulsify it and then just rinse it off but because I'm not in the shower at the moment <laughs> I've got a bowl of water or if you were at the basin you could do the same thing so you just get some wet fingertips and you can probably see maybe it starts to turn into a milk as soon as you add the water so you don't need to use like a flannel or a cloth to remove it um which is another thing that like I usually love using balm style cleansers but when you have to then use like a cloth to remove it to actually get all of the residue off then it becomes a hassle because then you have to wash the cloth and if you use the same cloth day after day it gets a bit dirty and it's just a bit not very hygienic because I'm also lazy and I don't want to have to wash it every day <laughs> so anyway so you rub it all over then you rinse it off which I'm just gonna use some cotton because I don't have a sink with me oh I think it's I great need, I need the, some more water I think the product's doing all the hard work for you um so if you are time poor um it could be a really great uh, ritual to do each night definitely and it leaves your skin feeling like very clean but not tight and dry which is quite nice and then some of the ingredients in this one we've got kakadu plum which is from australia and that has the richest source of vitamin c out of any natural ingredient so it's really good for brightening the skin and works as a nice antioxidant and there's also eucalyptus oil in there which i mentioned earlier which is a great antibacterial ingredient and there's macadamia nut oil as well which is another nice australian ingredient so it's quite like a good all-rounder so you do that. So, so that, that should normally take like 30 seconds, let's say, that I've been talking. <laughs> um, and then we've got two different types of facial oils. So we've got our Amazonian cacai, which is the pink one. Um, and this one has cacai oil in it, is the main ingredient, which is from the Amazon rainforest. Um, and it has three times more vitamin A than rosehip oil. And it has more vitamin E and more vitamin F than argan oil does. So it's quite like a potent powerhouse of an oil. Um, and this blends quite nice if you have quite, like slightly maybe drier skin or skin that needs a bit more nourishment. Yeah. And then this green one is our Explorer blend, which is a blend of 21 different oils. This one's a lot more lightweight. So if you have slightly like combination to oilier skin, this works quite nicely. Or if you um, want to use an oil in the morning, it goes really nicely under makeup or it's a nice summertime oil as well. But I usually like, 
use the two interchangeably depending. So yeah, so I'd normally just put maybe one of, I'll use the pink one tonight. So put that on and then you just sort of like rub it all over and that's it, you're done. <laughs> Amazing. I think just those two products finished. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I think it's, as we've all kind of said, it's really great to find really simple things that will be easy to incorporate. It's not doing um, a full massage or getting your jade roller out or, you know, tying the hair back and doing all of these things. It's yeah. making sure you feel a little bit pampered every day. Um, and Sam, for you, in your uh, coaching, you put together a very broad program. So there will be like skincare rituals in there, you do meditations, you do journaling, you do exercise. Like how how do you put that together for people and uh, maybe talk us through that, that process? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of um, helping people to lay the foundations to kind of align mind, body and soul. So all of the rituals that I put together are tailored for either mind, body or soul. Um, you know, and so, uh, as you said, it, it could be, um, you know, journaling for gratitude, for example. It could be um, a, a workout routine. It could be a skincare routine. Um, it could be something as simple as um, a hand massage, but creating um, a meditation to go with it and creating uh, breath work as well as you're doing the massage. So, it just brings that person into the present moment. Um, and I think it's about, as as we've all said, um, creating that kind of element of luxury in what could easily just be seen as something that you just do every day, um, you know, in the sense of, oh, I'm just going to take my makeup off. Um, but like doing it with a beautiful cleanser that, you know, is that lovely, like balm texture. I like, I want that gummy cleanser for a start, <laughs> you know, and putting a beautiful oil on when you get out of the shower, you know, it's, it's two products. Like I, I love the 10 step skincare program. I love it, but I appreciate, you know, I don't have children. Whereas if you do have children, a 10 step routine is probably going to be the last thing on your mind. Don't, don't like, shaking ahead. Like, no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's it. Having two products, you know, a cleanser and an oil or like multi-purpose products. It, it's, it, it makes it so much more accessible. And I think that's the thing. I, I feel like wellness is, um, at risk of becoming, um, like almost like, um, this kind of, this thing that we can't achieve on our own and we have to spend a lot of money to get there. And, and that's so not true. Like it, it's the, it's the inherent right of every single one of us. It's not a luxury. Um, you know, we can create our own luxury just in the little things that we might otherwise see as mundane, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I like to encourage people to create that decadence, in their everyday lives, in those little moments that are luxurious but sustainable. Lovely. Jane, do you have any extra things to add? Maybe something, I love that simplicity analogy you used there, Sam. Like, it, it can be as easy as, as going for a walk. Jane, do you have any um, other tips that you would suggest? For, for wellness, for self-care? Yes. yes definitely walking getting out in nature and and fresh air and and you can do that with the kids as well you know if, if you you know if you're busy with the kids it's just great to, to get everyone out in that way um with with pregnancy it's really lovely to spend a bit of time pampering you know with with some skin care um your your skin you know you're not pregnant many times in your life <laughs> so I think it's good to indulge yourself um, and the demands that are being made on your skin at that time, you know, that, you know, very particular. Um, and if it's your first child, you're not going to have a lot of time for pampering once that baby's born. So, yeah, it, it's, it's nice to spend that time. 
Yeah, and I think the lovely thing about your products is that they take you from pregnancy and beyond. Like, people still use them now, even after their children have grown up. So they're products that take you back to that lovely pregnancy glow stage and make you feel you know really beautiful and, and taken care of as well which is fantastic yes I mean with, with the relax oil I have mums who use it during their pregnancy um, and then their labour and and then that day that they, they'll use it um, as and they say as a treat for myself you know after and it's something that feels like a little kind of luxury and indulgence amazing um I think going back to the simplicity aspect um I think sometimes when we see things like, I don't know, hashtag self-care Sunday or uh, well-being or there's certain classes or fads or nutritional or diets that you get into and you think, oh, I have to throw out all my carbs and only do this one thing or now I'm only eating carbs or, you know, it goes kind of back and forth. Um, I think there's a tendency to have consumption running parallel to well-being and self-care um which I think personally can be quite a dangerous thing because you it whilst it's important to invest in self-care it's investing in the right things for you um so being really mindful of what um it is that's actually going to make you feel healthy content and happy um and I think there's lots of things that we can do to focus on self-care probably on a budget do you guys have any freebie or low-cost kind of self-care tips that you would suggest Sam you're nodding there yeah very passionate about this (laughs) (laughs) um yes there is one ingredient that I would imagine these days a lot of people have probably got in their kitchen um and it doesn't come cheaply when it, you think of it as a kitchen item, um, but when you compare it to a lot of um, skincare products that are out there, it's actually quite reasonably priced. Um, and that is coconut oil. Um, it's, as I say, it's it, it's not a cheap cooking oil when you compare it to other cooking oils out there. But when you compare it to skincare, suddenly you realise you've got this wonderful multi-purpose product. Um, that you can usually pick up a nice decent sized jar for for under a tenner you know so straight away it's kind of like oh actually this is actually quite reasonably priced and it's great because you can use it to remove your makeup you can use it as a lip balm as a um, hair mask you could use it as a face mask as a moisturizer a body moisturizer a a lash balm a brow balm you know it's such a good all-purpose product and you can consume it internally as well, you know. Um, so I think, yeah, on a budget, that's a great thing. But I think as well, just, yeah, look at things that you have already that you can use um, in a multi-purpose way. Just as a, a personal example, um, I love gardening. And so I've got, um, you know, I've got roses and I've got lavender in my garden. And I, um, as for example, the roses are kind of, you know, starting to wilt, I will just deadhead them um, and put them in a bath. Because why not? You know, instead of just letting them die and the petals fall on the floor, why not just snip off the head and just put it in my bath? And I've got this wonderful, luxurious flower bath that's cost me nothing, you know? Um, And it's kind of like that it, it also um, takes me back to a really happy memory, um, you know, where I when I got married and had this wonderful kind of spa day, um, you know, and had these wonderful, this like frangipani flower bathing ritual, which was just beautiful. And it's like, great, I'm kind of like recreating that similar experience in my own home. It hasn't really cost me anything. Wonderful. I like that. Alex, how about you? Turn me off. Um, I guess like, yeah, for me... I suppose um, if you're on a budget, just keeping it very simple and maybe just like less is more. So if there's one product that you really like to use, so for example, in skincare, maybe you can splash out on that one thing, but rather than using like 10 different products, maybe just use one or two or three. Um, Because I don't think that you need necessarily like 10 products in your regime. I think if you get some very clever multitasking products, you can really cut that down and it will just help you sort of like focus a bit more, save money and also make sure that 
you do the regime or the routine because it's much easier to get it done in like five minutes. Lovely. Why, why is investments that's going to bear fruit yeah. like that? And Jane, from you as well. Um, it sounded like Sam was talking about the, the baby butter that, that I have in the range, which is a, a multitasker and sort of does all those different things. Um, and yeah, it's great to have one of those in, in, your, in your cupboard. Um, in terms of nutrition, I think, you know, often you, you know, you're talking about fad diets and often there's all stuff that you hear about superfoods and, um, and can be incredibly expensive. And I just think fruits and vegetables and beans and pulses and whole grains are all superfoods. You don't have to have a lot of money to to eat well and to and to nourish yourself um, well. Um, and and there's so much free content online now. You know classes and um, I've just started doing the Couch to 5K. Oh, cool. um, you know with that app. You know and that's completely free. Just you know have a run around the park and um, cost nothing. You know. Yeah, I think that might be an interesting shift because so many people have worked out at home um, and actually going back to the habit forming thing, this is a personal thing, but I find it really difficult to go to a gym, um, particularly when you're traveling around a lot. Um, so I think, yeah, there's going to be lots of interesting things that will change. And I think it's actually been beneficial for our well-being to simplify and and reassess and find those things that work. Um, so I think we'll leave it there for tonight. So thank you everyone for tuning in and thanks to our experts for answering all of the questions. Um, if you want to learn more about um, the ranges, Elixir and Nom Nom, then the links are in the comments below uh, and over on our website. And um, then also there's a link to Sam's Well Body Program as well. But if you have any more specific questions, then drop us an email or pop it in the comments and we'll come back to you. So thanks everyone. And Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So we will see you uh, back in two weeks time for our next event, which is going to be focusing on dry and sensitive skin in particular. So that's going to be a really, really in-depth one, whereas tonight was you know, very broad, talking about lots of facets of well-being. But yeah, so if you've got any dry skin or sensitive skin issues, then join us for that. <laughs>